Hello everyone, um, this is Mrs. Logos and I will be taking you through the cumulative review packet number five. So let's get started here with number one, which is asking you about limits from a graph. So if I'm looking at this limit, this means that I'm approaching um, the x value of one from the left side. And remember that limits are really y values. What y value am I approaching? So if I look at this graph from the left and I follow it through, as I approach positive one, looks like my graph never hits one exactly, but is approaching the y value of one. So my limit answer is just positive one going from the left. If I look at positive one coming from the right, my graph starts over here, goes all the way up, but then we have to come on this side of the asymptote. As we approach one, the y value we're getting close to and this time happen to be touching is here at negative one. So my limit here is negative one. So that means that the limit at one itself, because the limits from the left and the right do not approach the same y value, this limit exactly at one does not exist. Part D, if I'm looking at the x value of four and I'm looking from the positive or the right side, my graph starts over here, but as I approach four, it looks like I'm getting very, very close to this uh, vertical asymptote and I'm increasing, increasing, increasing all the way to positive infinity. So my limit from the right is positive infinity. My limit uh, reaching the x value of four from the left, my graph starts over here, jumps, and then goes also, as I approach four, x equals four, goes towards positive infinity as well, which means that my limit at four exactly, don't mind that little box that shouldn't be there, the limit at four exactly would have to be infinity also because the limit from the left and the right are both the same. Part G, the limit as x approaches negative two. Now this side notice there's not a direction, but even though there's not a direction, it's good to look from each direction anyway. Um, if I'm looking from the left side, it's approaching the y value of three. If I'm looking from the right side, it's also approaching the y value of three which means my limit has to be three. As X approaches positive three over here, looks like my graph as it approaches three from either side, looks like from the left it's at zero and from the right it's also zero. So my limit is the same from both sides, both being zero. So that's why that's my answer. Uh, the limit as X goes towards infinity. Well, this time what I mean by x goes to infinity is we're going forever this direction. So as the graph goes towards positive infinity with the x value, it looks like the y value is getting closer and closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, and that means that the y value is getting very close to zero. So my limit for part i would also be zero. Parts j and k, sorry about my handwriting there, um, both of them are not asking for a limit, they're asking for an exact y value for this x value. So at f of 1, I have two choices, but the only real choice here is f of 1 only exists here at negative 1. So that would be my answer for part j, because this whole represents there is no true y value that exists there. And f of 4, if I look at that, at 4 there is a asymptote, which means there is no y value that goes perfectly with it. So this one is not possible, so I'm going to write does not exist. For numbers two and three, we would like to find the domain, zeros, holes, and vertical asymptotes of this function. We will get to slant and horizontal um, in a little bit. So for number two and three, if I look at this function, I'm very, very tempted to factor first. Um, and my suggestion would be let's definitely factor, but before we cross anything out, let's find the domain. So for number two, if I look at my numerator, I can factor that to be x plus one, x minus one. In my denominator, I could take a GCF out of x. I'm left with x squared plus eight x plus seven. This quadratic can continue to factor. So I have x plus one, x minus one in the numerator. In the denominator, I have x, uh, x plus seven and x plus one. Now, before I cross anything out, my domain is represented by what does not exist in the denominator can help you lead to what does exist in the domain. So x cannot be zero in the denominator, cannot be negative seven, and cannot be negative one, which means that my domain would be rather lengthy. 
from negative infinity to negative 7, union, negative 7 to negative 1, union, negative 1 to 0, quite hefty, this keeps going, um, so ne negative infinity to negative 7, negative 7 to negative 1, negative 1 to 0, and then finally 0 to infinity, four parts. Now that I've found the domain, I'm going to look back at my function, and I am going to cross out the x plus 1s. Whenever I cross out a factor, that leads to a whole. So the x value of my whole would be negative 1 comma something. And to find that something or find that y value, I need to plug the negative 1 into the reduced version of my function. And that revert, reduced version right now is x minus 1 on the top and x times x plus 7 in the uh, denominator. So if I plug negative 1 in here, I would get negative 1 minus 1 on the top. In the denominator, I'd get negative 1 times negative 1 plus 7. So that would be negative 2 over 6 times negative 1, negative 6, which would be positive 1 third. So my whole is at negative 1 comma 1 third. After I cross out the wholes, whatever's left in the numerator here would represent a zero because a point cannot be both a whole and a zero at the same time. So x plus 1 cannot be a zero, but this one can. So my zero is at positive 1 comma zero because you always take the opposite sign of what you see. The vertical asymptote, in fact, I think in this one there's actually two verticals because in the denominator there's two things that are still uh, not possible. The function cannot exist there. And those values would be x equals zero is one line you cannot cross and the other one would be x equals negative 7. Number 3, if I go through and factor this one as well, the top is not quadratic, so it cannot be factored, but the denominator can factor into x plus 4 and x minus 3. Before crossing anything out, I notice that the denominator, the values x cannot be, are negative 4 and positive 3 which means my domain is negative infinity to negative 4, union, negative 4 to 3, union 3 to infinity. Now that I have found the domain, I'm going to cross out the x plus 4s, which means that my remaining function would be 1 over x minus 3. The reason I'm writing it down here is because I notice that because these match, the x value of my whole would be negative 4 comma something, and again, to find that y value, I would take negative 4 and plug it into the reduced version of my function. So I'd have 1 over negative 4 minus 3. So negative 4 comma negative 1 seventh would be my whole. Because what was in the denominator, excuse me, in the numerator canceled out, that means I have nothing on the top like this one that could become a 0. So in this case, I have no zeros or none. Vertical asymptotes, though, I do have one here. X uh, can, cannot be 3 in the denominator, so the line x equals 3 would be my vertical asymptote. On to number 4. We would like to find each limit algebraically. Uh, now remember, just like these examples, limits are really y values. So even though it's algebraically, your goal is really you're asking yourself, what y value are we approaching? And it's very tempting to remember that it's not necessarily a specific y value, it's what y value you're getting really close to from the left and the right. And the way that we can check this is we could plug in the 3 automatically to see if we get a y value out. If that's true, that has to be the limit that I'm approaching. So let's just try that first. When in doubt, just plug it in. 4 times 3 squared minus 9 times 3 plus 2. So if I'm approaching 3 from the left and right, let's see if we get a value. 4 times 9, make sure you follow the order of operations and square first. So 4 times 9 minus 9 times 3, 27, plus 2. So that would be 36 minus 27, plus 2. 36 minus 27 is 9, and 9 plus 2 is positive 11. So because I got an actual numerical answer, my limit as x approaches 3 of this function would be positive 11. Number 5, if I tried the same thing and I tried to plug 4 into the function top and bottom to start, I would get 4 squared minus 16 in the numerator 
in the denominator, I get 4 minus 4. When I do this, though, I would get 16 minus 16 on the top and 4 minus 4 on the bottom, which is 0 over 0. And as you know, we cannot divide by 0 in math. So plugging in 4 does not lead me to something that helps me find the limit. So instead, what I can do is I'm just going to recopy the problem over here, and I'm going to factor top and bottom if possible so that maybe something can cancel, and I can re-plug 4 in to see if it helps me. The numerator can factor to be x plus 4, x minus 4. My denominator almost matches what's on the top, except the signs are reversed. So what we could do here is we could take out a GCF of negative 1. And if I do that, if I take out a negative 1, my x, which is now negative, will become positive, and my 4, which is currently positive, would become negative. And when I do that, the x minus 4s cancel out, which means that my function as of now is left as x plus 4 over negative 1, which could be also be written as negative 1 times x plus 4, 4 if you prefer. Now remember, we are still trying to find a limit. We're trying to find the limit as x approaches 4 of this new function. If I plug 4 in now to this function for x, I get negative 1 times 8. So now that I have my reduced version, my limit would be negative 8. So you always want to try to factor, reduce the function down, so that you can actually plug in the number and not get an answer like 0 over 0. Number 6, the limit as x approaches 0. Again, I'm going to go ahead and plug 0 in first to see if that gets me anywhere. Well, on the top, 0 cubed is 0, plus 0 plus 0 all over 0. It looks like the same situation above. That get, this is not going to help me find a limit. So instead, let me see if I can factor and reduce anything. Um, so in the numerator, if I'm trying to find the limit as x approaches 0, if I take out a GCF of x on the top, I'll be left with x squared plus 5x minus 6. And in the denominator, i just be left with x. That's nice, because now the x's cross out, so I'm left with what is the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared plus 5x minus 6. Um, yes, you can factor this if you'd like to, but let's plug in 0 to see if we get an answer this time. Uh, 0 squared plus 5 times 0 minus 6. Yes, I do. I get 0 plus 0 minus 6, which means my limit as x is approaching 0 from left and right would be negative 6 is my answer. The last example uh, for this limit section here is asking you to find the limit as x approaches 9 of this function. Let me first plug in 9 to see if that gets me anywhere. It looks like it does not, because I get 3 minus 3 on the top, 9 minus 9 on the bottom, which again is 0 over 0, which doesn't help me. Because this function cannot factor, I'm instead considering using the conjugate. So if I rewrote the problem again, the square root of x minus 3 on the top, x minus 9 in the denominator, I would need to find the conjugate of the radical piece, or the numerator. The conjugate of root x minus 3 is root x plus 3. And because I want to just change what the function looks like, I need to technically multiply by 1, quote unquote, which is this over this. So on the top, let's foil these two to see what we get. Root x times root x is x. Root x times 3 is 3 root x. Negative, root, or negative 3 times root x is minus 3 root x. And then negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. In the denominator, I'm not going to um, multiply these, because usually if I do not multiply in the denominator, something may cancel to help me out. In the numerator, though, the 3 root x's cross out, so you're left with x minus 9 in the numerator, x minus 9 in the denominator, then the square root of x plus 3 in the denominator. Notice that these cross out now, so you're left with 1 over root x plus 3, and so now if I want to find the limit as x approaches 9, if I plug that in here, I get 1 over the square root of 9 plus 3, which is really 1 over 3 plus 3, or 1 sixth. 
so my limit ends up being one sixth.